Yes, it's I, Math Guy Zero, your teacher. Eh. I am not going to kid around. This is a very long problem. I'm going to try to go as fast as possible. So, and I will throw stuff in here to make it interesting, I hope. But you're going to do a two way ANOVA by hand. There's the data. You're going to have to pull up that source of variance table for a two way ANOVA. It is on our modal site, so pull it up. It might be a good idea to print it out as well. So, but we have two different variables. Our first variable, we're going to call variable A. It's an independent variable, it's categorical, and it's the managers. Okay, so it has three levels, and that would be Tammy, one, and Marty. Okay, those are the levels. So we're going to call Marty A1, Juan A2, and Tammy A3. Our second variable is, uh, again, a categorical variable, and it was if the people got the training or not. Okay. Two levels. We'll call B1 those that got the training, and B2 those that did not get the training. Okay, so now everything's properly labeled. So bracket A. Let's go look at the source table. Hold on. So here's the source table, and again, it's on our Moodle, and this is on the back page. <clears throat> you can, if you need to rotate the view, you probably do, if you go up here to view, click view, rotate view, you can turn it any way you want, okay, so that's what I did. But to calculate A, we have to take all the A1s, add them up, square them. Add that to all the A2s added up and squared, and all the A3s added up and squared. Okay, so back to our data. So it's going to be all the A1s, regardless of the Bs. Okay, that's that's how this works. So bracket A, you don't even care about the B. So we're going to add up all the A1, and divide that by the product of B times N. B is the number of levels in level in IVB. So let's get some room. So all the I, I, A1s, right? That's 12 plus 11 plus 13 plus blah, 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 all the way down to plus 11 plus 9. We're going to find that sum. We're going to square it. We're going to get that number. We're going to repeat it for A2. If you add up 10 plus 11 plus 12, blah, 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 all the way down to 8. Get that sum and square it. You get 103. Last one, if you add up all the A3s and then get that sum and square it, you're going to get that. So B is the number, little b is the number of levels in IVB, and there's two. And N is how many subjects in one single group? And that's five. Well, let's do some math. Now we're going to do the two times five. That's ten, so we figured out our A bracket. Yay! I'm going to place, place these in later on in the video so I don't have to drag them around. So you figured out your A bracket term. So that's your between groups with between groups with the managers. Okay, so now let's do B. So this is the training. So it works just like the other one. We're just going to go ahead and look at the B values, regardless of the A's. So we're going to add up all the B1s. Whatever that sum is, square it. We're going to find all the B2s. We're going to find that sum, square it. We're going to add them together. <laughs> and we're going to divide it by A times N. Uh, one of the good ways to remember what to divide it by <clears throat> is that it will not have the bracket un as a denominator, right? So if, if this is a B bracket, there will be no B factors in a denominator. So that's a good trick. So if I'm adding all the B1s, up, 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 right? All the yellows, if I add all those up, I get 182. I'm going to square it. If I add up all the pinks, I'm going to get, well, I don't know, let's find out, 139. Okay. So you square those, add them together. So how many levels in A? That's three, right? There's three managers, and there's, again, there's five in each group. Divide that, divide that. So we found bracket B. We are on a roll. Boom. Here comes the money. A, B. How do you find bracket A, B? Well, according to this thing, we have to break them down into each little cell. Okay? We find the sum of each little cell, square it. Each little cell, square it, etc., etc. 
So let's get back to ours. So our little cells are going to be very nicely and neatly, these just these little columns, okay? So, right, A1, B1, that's this column. A1, B2, that's that column. So we're going to do all of these individually. We're going to sum them up, find their column sums, and then square them. And I just did the first one, right? If you add up the first columns, you get 59. You square it, you get some big number but then here's all the totals of all the columns and we're about to square them and add them up so you get a big number n is the number in the groups so that's five and we just figured out our a b right this is our interaction bracket term ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. let's find y remember y is within group <clears throat> so with i with the y within group it treats everybody like one giant group that's why we're only dividing by one but but with the find a y bracket term is you square each term first. So 12 squared plus 11 squared plus 13 squared, blah, 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 all the way back here till 10 squared plus 10 squared. So through the magic of mathematics, I just calculated it out. So there's our y bracket term. And our t is, I forget. Let's find what our t is. Hold on. Let me get this up here. All right, here's our t. Ooh. We have to add up all the, all everybody first. We have to add everybody up first, get that giant sum, and then square it, and then divide by everybody. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. This is going to be our total, right? We add up everybody inside, get a grand total. I think that's squared already. Oh, that's a boo boo. Let me just delete that. Sorry. Um, so 3 is the number of levels in A, 2 is the number of levels in B, and 5 is the little N. Excuse me, and you get our T bracket. So we got our bracket terms. Yay us. So now, oh, we have to use these numbers. We're going to plug them into our source of variance table please hold let me pull this up okay we need the other page excuse me and we're gonna rotate this bad boy there it is so those numbers we just so diligently calculated we're gonna go ahead and plug them into the sum of squares degrees of freedom blah 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 so we're gonna we're gonna plug those numbers in here to finally calculate our f so let's get going Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's our numbers. There's a two-way table. Okay. So to find the sum of squares for each of the, the between group A, between group B, interaction, blah, 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 the, the bracket terms are a little bit different, okay? So please, again, look at your source table. So the first one is A minus T. So it's going to be 3, 4, 4, 2, minus 3, 4, 3, 5. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the blanks here. So 3, 4, 4, 2, minus 3, 4, 3, 5 is 7. Ooh. Okay, so that should tell you right off the bat. If there's not a large sum of squares, that means there's not going to be a significant difference between the managers, okay? That's, the, that's what the A variable is. Degrees of freedom. So if there were three managers, that's three levels, 3 minus 2, 1 is 2. Find the mean square, we divide the sum of squared by degrees of freedom, we get 3.5. We're going to calculate the F at the end of this, right? We, we need the within group mean squares. That's our error term. That's what we have to divide all these by. But now we're going to repeat for the B group. So B is bracket B minus T. So 3496 minus 3435 is 61. And I'm rounding here. Okay, I don't want to put decimals in here. I'm kind of squeezing for space as it is. And the degrees of freedom was two levels minus one is just one. That makes an easy MS, mean square, of 61. Moving down to the bracket terms. Bracket terms is a little bit weird. It is the bracket term minus A minus B add T. So when you do all that, you get 12. Big deal. And the degrees of freedom is simply 
a minus 1 times b minus 1. So a is 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2, and b is 2, so 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's 2 minus 1 is 2. And the mean squares is 12 divided by 2, 6. Easy. So the within group, the sum of squares is 28. Because I look at my two-way ANOVA source variance table. So it's y minus ab, y minus ab. Y, 3453 three, minus 3515, and that gives me 28. Degrees of freedom is AB times N minus 1. So A is 3 times 2 for B is 6 times 4 is 24. Hey. And then 28 by 24 is 1.1. 1. 1. Again, this 1.1, 1. 1, important. That is our error term. We're going to divide all of our other mean squares by this error term to get our, our calculated Fs. But let's finish the total. The total is y minus t. So it's going to be 3543 3 minus 3435, and we get 108. Amazing. And our degrees of freedom is a times b times n minus 1. So it's 3 times 2 times 5 is 30, minus 1 is 29. And we don't need anything else on this total. We're not really going to use it. But now we're going to go ahead and make our calculated f's. So 3.5 divided by 1.1 is 3.2. 61 divided by 1.1 is 55. Again, I'm rounding seriously. And then 6 divided by 1.1 is about 5.5. Okay. So now these are our calculated Fs. We have to compare them to the book Fs. I'm sorry, the critical Fs in the table in the book. But in order to look up the critical F value from a table, you need to know the degrees of freedom. So we would go back to our table. So for variable A, we're going to use 2, 24. For B, it's 124. And for interaction, it's 224 again. We're going to use the cutoff alpha of 0.05. And again, there's the degrees of freedom. We need those to look up the F, the critical F. So let me look them up. Hold on. These are the same critical F tables that are in chapter two or three, the one where we did the one-way ANOVA. So you please use these same F tables. So two comma 24. So there's two, right? The top number is the number that goes across the top. So we had two, and the last number is the number that goes down the sides. So we need to find two comma 24. Uh, okay, so two, 24, right here, 3.40. So this should have been 3.40. Okay, let's look at 124. Hold on. It's right next to the other one. So 124 should have been 4.26. And 2.24, we, 2.24, we already know is 3.4. Isn't that nice? So now we have to make a decision. Was our calculated F greater than the table F, the critical F? Okay. If this is true, that means there's a significant difference between that variable. Okay, the first one, it is not true. So there was no significant difference between the managers when it comes to unit sales. The second one, oh yeah, big time true. So there was a significant difference between the, the salespeople that had the training and not when it came to unit sales. And the interaction effect, again, it it is positive. Uh, there is a significant interaction effect somewhere between your managers and the trainees and the people that got the training and not. Okay, so there is significant interaction. So you can forget about the main effect of A. There was none. In other words, if you just ran a one-way ANOVA, regardless of the training or not, you would not get a significant F, right? But there was a main effect B. What that means is that the, the training was effective at increasing unit sales. So the training helped, right? That's the difference between the significant... I'm sorry, that was that's the difference between those that got to training and those that did not. There was a significant difference. 
and the interaction tells us what you have to do is you have to go back and look at the simple effects. You really couldn't uh, give all the all the effectiveness just to the training because you have interaction. With interaction, you're never sure which of the variables is doing what. So if we were just looking at the simple effects here, we would just look at just the A's. So forget about the B's. We would compare Marty to Juan to Tammy. We would do that with a simple one-way ANOVA. And we know we would get a, a non-significance because it came out in the other one, right? Uh, if we wanted to do the other simple effects and just look at the B's, okay, we would do we would lump all the B1s together and put them against all the B2s lumped together, and that just becomes a basic independent t test, okay? So, if you do have inter interaction, you're supposed to look at the simple effects. But that is the results of this homework. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was long. Thank you for sticking in there. MGZ out.